Hey everybody, welcome back to Your Guitar Story. Today, we're talking about walking into the guitar shop and leaving with a guitar you never planned on buying, but you just had to have it. My story of this one coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to Your Guitar Story. And uh, thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate it. Once again, like and subscribe, please. Uh, hit those notifications. You know, all the good stuff uh, helps the algorithm and helps me grow this channel so I can bring you some more stories. So today we're going to talk about that awesome feeling of walking into a guitar store and finding a guitar that you absolutely can't leave without. And today it is going to be about mine right here. This is one of those that just got me. Uh, this is a 2019 Fender Stratocaster uh, Ventera 50s in seafoam green, uh, which is just a cool color. I always like this color. Uh, so that didn't, that did, certainly didn't hurt. That wasn't really the reason why I bought it. But, um, you know, on this channel, one of my ideas is I want to bring our stories of the things that continue to grow our uh, our love for and passion for music and guitars and stuff like that. And, you know, I think, you know, as I'm talking to some people and I'm putting together some stuff to do for this channel, uh, I'm really getting some, some good stuff from folks. Uh, I do have some cool things coming down the line. So uh, keep, keep on sharing, you know, uh, and like and subscribe and share the channel. And, and let's grow and let's continue to tell those guitar stories, right? So, um, but today we're going to talk about one of mine. This guitar right here, a 2019 Fender Stratocaster Ventera 50s, like I said. Uh, they did just release the uh, new Ventera 2s. So, uh, you know, there's a couple of little different things, some different colors and whatnot. For the most part, the specs are actually quite similar uh, to this guitar. Uh, but that being said, I'll go over the specs and everything on this guitar uh, in a minute. So, <clears throat> but I wanted to kind of talk about the experience. So that day was really cool. And, uh, you know, I went into the guitar store and uh, my brother-in-law came with me. Him and I are good friends. Uh, we get together and play a lot. He is left-handed. So when we go to the guitar store, there's often not a lot of options for him to play. Uh, which is a story for another day about left-handed guitars. I know it's a small market, but boy, it really, you know, when we have conversations sometimes, it really, really kind of sucks for him that, you know, I could be like, look at this one and look at that one. And he's like, yeah, they don't have a left-handed option, right? <laughs> um, it can really kind of be a pain. But uh, so when we go to the guitar store, uh, it's kind of fun for me because he'll hand me things that he wants to hear, like play this one and play that one. And he hands me a couple of guitars. I did go in with a specific purpose that day, though. I was looking for a single coil guitar of Sun Point because I had uh, the blue PRS behind me here. Um, I had that cheaper Squire Strat that's on the wall over there um, before I did some mods to that one, which maybe we'll get to one of these days. I don't know. At any rate, uh, so I wanted a nicer single coil guitar. It didn't have to be a Fender Strat. Uh, it was certainly in the mix. Uh, and I also... Uh, I really wanted to play a Silver Sky SE, and I wanted a Silver Sky SE because, honest to goodness, a $3,000 core model wasn't really in the cards either. So uh, I went in that day. I played one. The, the place we went had one, and I really didn't like it. I thought it sounded nice. The pickups on that guitar sounded really well, uh, really good. They were voiced nicely. Um, uh, from what I understand and doing some research on that guitar, they are voiced to, uh, knock out some of the highs and the chiminess of the 50s strats. So probably based more on like a sixties style strat car, uh, guitar and pickups. So, um, at least that's what I understand Mayer's goal was with those pickups. So, uh, and you know, from playing that guitar and playing this one and, and some other ones I played that day, it's probably pretty accurate, but um, I actually looked at a few different guitars. I looked at an Eric Clapton Blackie, uh, which was a really nice guitar. Uh, I love the bright maple neck and headstock on that guitar. It's really cool. But I'm not a huge fan of black, just plain black Stratocasters. I think it's kind of boring and dull. Uh, and uh, I played an American, another American Strat they had. And then my brother-in-law handed me this one. He goes, hey, try this one. And uh, I said, okay, cool. I'll give this one a whirl. And from the instant this guitar uh, touched my hands, I was like, oh man, this feels really nice. Now, 
I will say this. I've heard mixed reviews on how these came from the factory. Uh, that they were decent, but they needed a setup. Well, whoever had this guitar before me, because this was used when I bought it, um, definitely put the work into it. I mean, there is, there is, it is super smooth here. Uh, the action was nice and low, and it just played like a dream right from the get-go. Uh, I really haven't done anything to it since I got it, other than put some new strings on it. I threw some, um, played around with a couple different string gauges on this guitar. I tried nines, uh, my typical Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. I, I actually didn't like the way they felt on this guitar, and I've been trying String Joys recently uh, on my guitars, and I, I really started to like their electric guitar strings. So I put a set of nine and a halves on this guitar, and that seemed to be like the happy number, because it had tens on it when I bought it. Uh, at least what I thought were tens. I, I don't know. They were thicker than the nines I put on, so that's what I'm going with. But uh, nevertheless, Nine and a half string joys on here now, and that seems to be the sweet spot for the setup and the way this guitar is set up right now. I like to usually play it a half step down, um, just because I, I play a lot of stuff that kind of lends itself to that. But, uh, man, I'll tell you, this thing just, when I touched it and I started playing it, it felt so good. The action was so good. Um, you know, my brother-in-law was like, man, you really sound good. I don't know if I've ever heard you play that well. And... At the, I was like, cool, thanks. And I was like, wait. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> no, it was, a, it was a cool compliment. It was just really what he was trying to tell me was, hey, man, that guitar is working for you. And, uh, you know, and he was right. He was. Um, so here's the cool thing. I actually have pictures of the day that I bought this guitar. And I'll put one over here or over here. Uh, and um, so you can actually see... There's me holding the guitar uh, when uh, the day before I, before I bought it. And I had played a couple of other things, like I said, that day. But this one just, man, it worked so nicely. I had to have it. Uh, so <clears throat> I ended up, uh, I actually ended up going home that day. And then I came back the very next day uh, as soon as the place opened and I bought the guitar. I was so nervous that this guitar was going to sell and I wasn't going to have it. Uh, so I went right as they opened at like 11 a.m. on a Sunday, and I, I went in, and I was like, I'm buying it. So, uh, there's a good example of how the guitar sounds. Again, it's tuned a half step down. Um, just so, for your information, what I'm using there is I've got a uh, Line 6 Catalyst 60 that I play through. Uh, and I'm using a Keeley uh, Noble Screamer. I don't know if any of you have tried that pedal. It's actually a, a whole lot of fun. Uh, I really like the Tube Screamer version of it, and that's kind of what I had it set to when I played the lead. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about the specs of this guitar, because uh, it's a pretty cool guitar. It's set up to be vintage uh, 50s style. So there's a couple of things. Obviously, we've got the small headstock, um, you know, with the spaghetti logo on it. And then, um, so for the pickups... When you look on Fender's website, it just says 50s vintage pickups. It really doesn't give you a lot of description as to what they do. Uh, but as you guys can hear uh, in the playing sample, it really does have that chiminess of, of a 50 Strat. Um, you know, so I, I like the way the pickups sound. I have no problem with them whatsoever. Uh, so, and, and I think, you know... It sounds like a Strat. I don't know. It, it, it sounds as much like a Strat as any other. <laughs>
but it, it is it's a good sounding guitar um <clears throat> and then a couple of other things so it's it's a vintage style tremolo uh you know with the vintage saddles and the uh six screw tremolo instead of the you know the more modern two screw one now there's a couple of things that i really like about the vintage stuff one is the vintage tuners i love these tuners with the slot where you put the string in and twist it those are those are my favorite fender style tuners um and this one does have a five-way switch on it uh i think you have to go pretty hard on the um i think they have that new 70th anniversary 54 uh reissue that has the three-way or you can they give you the three-way with it i don't i don't know but something like that uh i would have put a five-way switch on it anyway because as you guys can tell i spend a lot of time in the fourth position it's just it's my favorite strat sound that in the neck position uh so <clears throat> But uh, also, the one thing that I, I kind of wish they would not have done on this guitar being is that it's not really a 100% accurate copy of a 50 Strat. There's no specific gear or anything like that. Is I wish they would have just put a regular truss rod adjustment on this, but it is the, the screw at the base of the neck here. Uh, so you do have to take some stuff apart to do a truss rod adjustment. It's not the end of the world, right? But it, it's kind of a pain. And it would not have bothered me. It would not have made me go, oh, that's not a 50s guitar. I'm not buying it. I would not have done that. Uh, I just like the guitar. Uh, the fact that it is a cool 50s color and it's, you know, it's got some of the cool vintage specs on it. Great. Right. But it certainly wouldn't have made me go, oh, well, they screwed that up. Nah. I would have rather they put the truss rod adjustment at the top of the neck where they are on the more modern guitars. Um, but this one has the soft V and it is a, it is a thicker neck. Uh, it is a thicker for sure. I played some more modern strats. Um, and you know, that, that thinner C shaped neck that they put on a lot of the more modern stuff. It's okay. Uh, but I personally really like this thick neck and, uh, no, I don't have the measurements on it. Um, look, th this guitar has been demoed probably to death on on youtube so if you wanted to find you know a true you know here's what this pickup sounds like and that pickup sounds like you can absolutely do that on youtube this really wasn't what this this um this video is about but i thought i'd give you some specs on the guitar and kind of kind of fill you in you know what this video is about <clears throat> is how we grow our guitar stories and what shapes us into the guitar players and, and music lovers that we become uh, and you know, this guitar is just, again, another part of my guitar story, you know, the, the experience of going to the guitar shop and finding something I really wanted and I didn't even know that I wanted it. That's what it's about. Um, you know, and these are the stories that I want you all to share with me, right? You know, hit me up on there. If you go to yourguitarstory.com, you can actually find a contact, um, on there. You can send me an email, you can, um, and uh, we can talk about a guitar that you'd like to tell me about. So <clears throat> uh, coming up down the road, I've got some really cool stuff. I've got a, an SG that's got a really cool story that I'm going to tell you. And I'll have uh, that person on that owns that guitar. Uh, I've got uh, a friend of mine that I'm going to go visit uh, over the next couple of weeks. He's got some really cool stuff, including a dead spec Silver Sky that we're going to talk about for sure because uh, I am dying to play that guitar. I want to see what it sounds like and feels like. Uh, and um, also reconnect it with an old bandmate um, from way back in the day when I lived in another part of the country. Uh, and we're going to talk about some stuff too at some point getting together. He's kind of got a, a one-off uh, McCarty uh, PRS that we're going to talk about that's super cool looking. And uh, we'll talk about that guitar. So stay tuned for some of that stuff coming down the line. Uh, I am going to try to keep some of this stuff coming, uh, but again, please like and subscribe. It certainly helps the channel and helps us grow this, uh, and you know allows me to um, you know at some point uh, put some links in there to some of the stuff that we're looking at or talking about. Uh, you know, and let me know if there anything that you'd specifically like to see or hear about. I'm open to suggestion. You know, it's a relatively new channel. If there's something that you'd like me to cover or a topic that you'd like to talk about. I'll certainly take it into consideration. Um, you know, uh, I do, um, <clears throat> you know, like, again, you know, this is, we're just growing the channel and trying to figure out the best direction for it. 
but I believe that there's a lot of guitar stories out there that need to be told. You know, you hear really cool stuff all the time uh, about, you know, a guitar that shows up at a guitar shop as an original owner. And here's a picture of the guy that was playing it back in the 50s or 60s. I mean, that's cool stuff, you know, but a lot of times that's kind of where that story dies. And I want to keep that going. So um, my guitar story continues to grow. I'm sure yours continues to grow. Let's share those guitar stories uh, with each other and with everybody else. All right, everybody, one last time, like and subscribe. And don't forget to share those guitar stories. Keep building your guitar story. Whatever makes you want to play the guitar, pick your guitars up more, that's all part of it. All right, we're going to keep putting joy out in the world. That's one of my missions. All right, I want to talk to you and hear your guitar stories. Please let me know what you got. Let me know your ideas for the channel. I'll talk to you all soon.